Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on and welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces out there. And welcome to this, the next in our series of videos that we call Quick Tips, where I cram as much of my scuba diving expertise into a video five minutes or less to help you out on a given topic. If you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button to help us out. This week, we're talking about the advantages, disadvantages, of different mounting options for your GoPro action camera. Now, GoPro is still my go-to action camera of choice when I want something small and compact to do my filming underwater because it's a feature-packed camera, the image quality is amazing, the stabilization is amazing, but as opposed to other cameras that are really meant only for scuba diving, I can use my GoPro for other action sports on dry land. Now this week I got to dive with my all-time favorite buddy, my wife Karina, and she was kind enough to help out and model some of the different GoPro mounting options. Uh, so let's dive straight in. First up, we have the floaty handle. This is just a cheap version that I bought on Amazon. GoPro make their own, which is a bit more expensive, but the concept is the same. Essentially, if you let go of this camera underwater, it will float to the surface. There are times when that is an advantage and other times when it's a disadvantage. But first, let me tell you what I like about the floaty handle, and that is that it gives you a good ergonomic grip. You get to see exactly what you're pointing your camera at at all times. So that's obviously an advantage. Now, if you're snorkeling or on a shallow reef dive, this is absolutely a fantastic option because if you accidentally let go of the camera, you can simply swim up to the surface if you're underneath and retrieve it. If you're on a deeper dive, however, and you've got you know, safety stock considerations and ascent rate considerations, by the time you get to the surface, your camera will be long gone. Definitely recommended for shallow diving, not at all recommended for deep diving. Next up, we have the Notorious Selfie Stick. One major advantage of this is obviously that you can extend your reach. So if you have a shy or timid animal that you wanna get into a shot, this might be a nice way to go about it. Please no poking or prodding of animals with your GoPro Selfie Stick. Thank you, please. Uh, the other nice thing about it is, yes, it has a nice grip, ergonomical handle. You can angle the camera however you want. Um, so there's lots of nice features about this. Some of the disadvantages of using a selfie stick include the fact that when you've got it fully extended like this, any small movement on this end causes a great big movement on the other end. And even though this one packs down to eh, relatively short, if you're not filming the entire dive with it, it's still kind of cumbersome to carry around with you. Next up, I have the backpack or shoulder strap mount. Now, I put a video out a little while ago about how to mount accessories to a backplate and wing setup, and I got about 10 people ask me about this exact piece. How did I mount my GoPro? The links to all the products that I'm showing you right now, all the ones that I particularly use, are in the description of this video below. Yes, they are affiliate links. Purchases made through those links may earn me a small commission at no additional cost to you. And I thank you for supporting your channel. But this is made by a company called Telsin, Telesin, Telesin, apparently. Uh, I found it on Amazon. It's about 10 bucks. It's really quite reasonable. And it's designed mainly for backpacks that you put it on your shoulder strap and you can you know, cover your hikes and so on. But I thought, hey, why can't that work? for a backplate and wing setup, or even a BCD harness for that matter. The nice thing about this setup is your camera is really secure. It's strapped to your body, it's not coming off, and I've done at least 100 dry inch strides, and this hasn't moved at all. It's also really easy to just unclip the camera, take it out, fire it up, point it at where you wanna film, and then put it away again. That being said, it does take some getting used to to make sure that you know, have the muscle memory of where the mount actually is on your shoulder and making sure that you securely reattach the camera. The other disadvantage with this is it's not really a set it and forget it kind of style. I thought at the start that maybe I could just clip it onto my shoulder and just press go and record, but you end up with a lot of hose footage. I mean, I normally have it on my right shoulder actually because I have my inflator over my left, but still you're gonna get some regulator hose come through into the shot and it's generally not uh, not desirable. So I do use it as a, as a hold the camera kind of technique, but whenever I wanna shoot with it, I just pop the camera out and then I go handheld. This is still wet from yesterday's dive. Ah. Next up, I have the head mount option. So this is the actual GoPro head mount strap. Uh, you can also get masks that have a little GoPro mount built into the mask frame. Um, I like the head mount option for mountain biking. It's a fantastic option for that because I can press record, set it and forget it, and then I don't have to use a hand to worry about the camera. I also mount it to different poles on the bike and get different angled shots and all that good stuff. 
This is why I don't recommend it for scuba diving. Number one, you will have no idea how much you move your head underwater until you see the footage from one of these. It's just a shaky blur of you looking around, checking your gauges, finding your buddy, you know, swimming off that way. And then, you know, and it's a mess. The footage you get is a mess. And the other reason is if you have it mounted above your head and you're looking anywhere in a slightly up position, all you're going to get is footage of your exhaled bubbles. Also, not so much the mask mount, but these actual head mounts are a really bad idea when it comes to entering the water as a scuba diver. Whether you do back roll entry or giant stride, um, you're pretty much guaranteed this is coming off your head, and if you don't recover it, it's gone for good. And if you do have it on the mask mount option where it sits just here above the top of your mask, and there's any kind of current out there at all, that current pushes on the camera and ends up moving your mask around to the point where you're gonna get mask leakage. Head mount as a scuba diver? No, just don't do it. Last but by no means least, you have the camera tray option, like this one from Backscatter. A small compact tray with a neoprene covered handle, nice ergonomic grip, and a mounting arm for a light of choice. This one happens to be a solar light from Light and Motion, uh, 2000 lumens. But a nice small compact unit, uh, you can get the framing angle of the light right, just how you want it, and see easily through the screen where you're pointing your camera. So I really like this one for when I'm filming underwater. I also have a double arm tray, so if I'm in dark or gloomy conditions, I can mount an extra light. But for simple GoPro shots, this gets the job done. Really, I was trying to think of a con, uh, you know, a disadvantage of using this system, and the only one I could really think of was if I'm not filming the whole dive, then this is quite bulky. I would just take a double ender and clip it off to me, but then it's kind of hanging off of you. But apart from that, this is the ideal way for me to use a GoPro underwater. So let me surmise by saying that the two options I use the most are the shoulder mount and the single arm tray. The shoulder mount I use if the main objective of the dive isn't filming but I want to have a camera with me just to take a couple of quick clips, maybe give a student some video feedback on their trim, whip it out, take a couple of clips, put it back again, forget about it. If the main objective of the dive is filming, then I like to have that tray arm because it's nice and ergonomical, I can get steady shots and I can articulate the light to exactly where I want it to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this quick tips video. If you did, please give it the old thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider to subscribe to our channel. You know how it works by now, just over here, I'll put some other videos that you can check out. And until next time, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready quick tips video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.